Welcome back, everybody, to Gear I Didn't Do It with this! Why is the phone always there? Is that like my loading? That'd be really cool. From the director of Armageddon. Right up there. That's nice. I hum cheerfully to myself as I pass by the movie theater. There are so many people here. Did the new movie just get released? Oh. Oh. Break It Buster just came out. Right. I'd love to go see it that sometime. Toy Story 4, is that Carl Run? <laughs> Carl Run! Shadow. That's terrifying. Too bad right now I'm still on the clock. I sigh wearily and weigh off, weigh the coffee holder in my right hand. There's drinks for Ted and me in there. I think mine's probably melting, but I'd feel bad if I just waltzed into the shop slurping coffee right in Ted's face. It's better to wait. The shop's only a few blocks away. No problem. I can get there soon. Maybe I'll invite Chandra to watch the movie with me later. When I get to the shop, there's no one but Ted in there. Hey, I got the... Uh, I freeze once I see he's on the phone! <gasps> Ted looks angrily over at me and silently places a finger on his lips. Why is there still the sounds of people outside? We're inside! What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Get, let me get no pet roof at. So, yeah. Ted bounces his phone... Thanks, Skype. You can go away now. Ted balances the phone on his shoulder as he rummages around the front counter. I can't see for some for something to write on. I smile and place his coffee in front of him, then head to the aisle to give him some time. Still the sound of busy people. It's funny. Ted would never have allowed someone to talk on their phone while on the shift. Now with the block party drawing closer our, and our barbecue idea in tow, he's been glued to that thing. Wow, really love the sound to stop. Hope he remembers what we talked about the other day. That thing about he should let other people help him. Lately, he hasn't uh, told me to really do anything besides my job. I'm getting worried. He might, he's gonna end up worse than just fall asleep on the couch. He's gonna end up worse than just falling asleep on the couch. There we go! As I tidy up a few things, I finally hear Ted say goodbye. Two hours on the other line. That's my cue. It is now safe to approach him. <laughs> I lean my head out the side and talk to him from the aisle. What was that? The sound effect's getting really annoying. I just hear this random burp every once in a while. Ted's still scribbling things down as he talks to me. Is that in the game? Yes. Local bakery just tying up the order for all the sand 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 sandwich bread. This bread I'll have to hear from the butcher. Uh, and we should be good at block party. Sweet. Ted grins at me excited, and I have to pinch myself because I've never seen him legit excited about anything before. So you talk to your dad's friends on the force. Got the schedule and everything. Even if we don't get too many volunteers, the extra manpower will really help come in handy. Yeah. Raise an eyebrow at Ted. And you couldn't ask your dad to do that for you? Hey, for your information, fine, miss. I did ask my pod help with all this. Oh, whoops, I guess I shouldn't have assumed that he was still on one man control freak parade. Come and ask them to call me. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. Maybe I spoke too soon. Look, Ted, you know that's not what I meant. Ted slams his pen down on the counter indiligently. Diligence, get it. Oh, sorry. Well, it's an important job. Not like I could have not not like I could have done myself. I know. I know hide. Nor hair, the fellas, okay? <laughs> that was the lamest excuse ever, and you know it. Shut up, let him help when it gets down to it, promise. Jeez, sure. I'm skeptical, but I let it drop. He can be so stubborn sometimes. He's lucky that I'm not... Uh, He's lucky that I'm not only arguing for his dad's sake and not for my own, too. I want to help out more some... More too some... <laughs> Ted's phone goes off again, and both of us look at where he left it on the counter. What the hell's it this time? Brow furrow, Ted lifts up his phone to check the caller ID. Oh, it's Pops. Better answer that. Get closer as Ted props the phone to his ear. <sighs> you don't want people to make fun of you for how you speak, and yet you answer the phone with howdy? Yes, sir. Just here at the moment. Why? Ted shoots me a glance. They're talking about me. I lean in a little closer to try and overhear the conversation. I'm gonna what? Well, okay. Ted pulls the phone away and presses the 
button to place it on speaker. His dad's voice comes out from the loud and clear. Can I can't remember his voice. Can she hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, speaker. Hi, mister. <laughs> Nicole, what did I tell you about this mister? Yeah, business. It's Ron. Ron Weasley. <laughs> this Ron sounds like that. No one we can speak in the fine English. I expect better. Uh, I laugh. It's just a reflex to call your friend's parents by their surname. Sorry, sir. I'll do it next time. Now, sir just makes me feel like some old gent. Well, anyway, we got a surprise for you, too. Is it a puppy? Ted can't handle surprises. Pops. What kind of surprise? I like surprise. I'm sure to keep excited for the two of us as Ron continues with his, the, with his explanation. Now I know you two have been working real hard lately, and I just wanted to let you both know how, I mu how much I appreciate you giving it all for the shop. So I figured... Why a night on the town wouldn't hurt, assuming that the two of you are free to celebrate tonight. Woo woo. First date with Ted. Woo woo. Sorry. Cut him with stuff, but pops. Night out, seriously? We have time for that? You will make time for that. It's a celebration. Of course we have time for it. Celebration of what, exactly? Er, uh, being such hard workers. <laughs> I can tell Ron is wearing such a cheesy fake grin right now just by listening to his voice. I bet this was his way of making Ted take a break from all the work he's been doing. It takes a few, except, sorry, this ba this background noise. It's like people constantly talking to me while I'm trying to read. It takes a few expectant looks from yours truly before he finally gives in. What are we doing? Can we go see that movie? I silently pump a fist as Ron lets out a small whoop over the phone. Thought it'd be nice to go check out that new disco club in town. Ooh, a disco club. I don't like clubs. <laughs> I've heard of that place. It's supposed to be super cool in there. This would be my first time checking out if we went. <laughs> You've been to a club before, Nicole. A uh, disco club, not much of a dancer. Ugh. You can just hear the distaste on Ted's lips. Oh, come on, son. It wouldn't hurt to try it out. Besides, you love da- Ah! Ah! I love dancing. Somebody loves dancing. Ted hastily covers his- Fold with his hands. Alright, alright, I'll go- to just stop talking. Okay, that was weird. Do I want to know? Just dancing. Just dancing. Don't worry about it. No, this never happened. Don't ask. Yeah, I probably won't. Ron goes over the details of what time we should go and where the place is. Once we have the all once we have that all sorted out, we bid him goodbye and Ted hangs up the phone. So all this crazy ideas just want us to take the cake. It's just a Ron said pub. Club. <laughs> Line up, Ted. It wouldn't hurt for you to to get our hoot what what is that word hootney hootney on is that even the word Ted stares at me never say that again <laughs> fine Lambert but can I go now I hold my hands together pleadingly my shift's almost over right and I'll, I'll, and I'll need the extra time for when I get ready for the disco call later extra time for what showering doing my hair makeup choosing what to wear you know girl stuff that's like a whole lot of effort, no good reason. Oh, come on, Ted. Like, you'll never get it. Can I just go, please, please? I got stuff to do. Takes a few more seconds of bang before Ted finally gives in to me. Again, I might add. Fine, skedaddle. You remember what pop, what my pa said. We'll be waiting for you at the disco club. Yes, yes, I'll be up home. Okay, but what if I get there before you guys do? Ted scoffs. That ain't gonna happen. He's gonna be there an hour early. He's leaving right now, actually. What is with this... Sound. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Ugh. All right. Guess nothing I can do about it. Ted waves. I head back to my dorm to change. I wasn't lying when I said I had. I need the extra time. Looking attractive is a lot of work for a girl. Oh, oh, oh Nicole. You're half naked. That's what you wear for a bra for those boobs, girl? Nuh-uh! Nuh-uh! You must be some kind of superhero if that's keeping your boobs up. She got big ass boobs! Though in some ways Ted is right. What's the point of dolling myself up like this? It's not like I'm going on a date or anything. Unless you counted this as a date with both Ted and his dad. Oh, his dad's- Ooh, his dad's coming. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, like, that's kind of funny. I've been saying that Ron's pretty handsome for his age. 
Ooh. Seriously. No. I guess I want an extra time to get ready because I kind of want to get ready for Ted. Like, I want to wow, I want to wow him. If you want to wow him, get back into here. Uh, get back into nothing, pretty much. Show him that bra you wear. That's a wow factor right there. Make his jaw drop when he sees me. And this might mean something, huh? Yeah, it might mean that I like him if I'm going through all the trouble to impress him. I think about it, and I've already called him cute, so I must think he's attractive. His personality, on the other hand, has as much appeal as the smell of a wet dog, but that's a cute, right? <laughs> that's the best thing I've ever heard. Like, what did I develop a weird crush on him? What have we started going for him? It wasn't like this when I went over to his house. Maybe this is when I finally started. Then? I don't want to think about this anymore. So I don't, okay? This is a total lie. Even if I was even if- even as I get ready, Ted stole my mind. I wonder what he's gonna wear to the disco club. Would it be something nice too? Am I gonna look overdressed? God forbid he wears his, his, his work uniform. There because I can see him doing that. He'd claim it's more efficient things to do. Ah, why cutie? Oh. Oh, you're- Oh, you're so cute. Look at the little jacket thingy. Aww. <clears throat> I'm still giggling, giggling, giggling at the thought as I head into town. It's getting dark outside. The streetlights flicker on and I look at them overhead. They're almost like spotlights. Obviously, they're trying to display my awesomely attractive self as mine. I decided to go with a yellow sleeve dress, sleeveless dress tonight. Cinch a belt around my midsection, throw on a funky pattern vest, and ta-da! I'm ready on the disco to get the disco on. Wow. I secretly hope that Ted likes it. But shh. Match. I see the neon lights of Disco Club shining nearby, and I hear you in case Ted and Ron are waiting for me. I'm half right. Only Ted's there, and he's looking. Whoa. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! White blazer, gray slacks, a striped button, button up with the first few buttons undone. That's how I like my men. Either this was a lucky break, or Ted is way better at dressing himself than I first thought. I didn't help that most of my memories I have are him in his work uniform. You, I want my memories like this! This! I want more like this, bruh! Look like that more. Look like that more often. <clears throat> he has his hands in his pockets and seems to be searching for something. He stands under the light of the club. I wonder what it is. I wave to get his attention. Yo, Dad, am I? Hey, Dad, am I late? Ted turns in the direction of my voice and falters. Ah, Nicole, why the fuck? Should I- still should I came in your, like, pajamas. Underwear, there we go, that's what I was looking for. He coughs into his hand, quickly stabbing his voice. No, you're not late, ran time, actually. Stunning. So do you. <laughs> oh, what's this? Finally a compliment on my looks. I left before he has a chance to tell me to shut up. Kidding! Thanks, Dad, you look pretty spiffy yourself. Why dress up? Well, it's a disco club. I thought it'd be... I thought she'd dress nice and... No more reason. You were thinking the same thing. You ought to do press her, huh? What about you? Don't act like I'm the only one with their best duds on. <laughs> Why'd you dress up, huh? Easy, I want to do impress you. <laughs> I thought we weren't gonna tell him that. I don't know if that just that right out of her mouth, or wow, our morale's at 14. Anyway, I don't know if that just flew right out of her mouth. I don't know what happened. Ten flinches back, completely caught off guard. Yeah, so am I. You're gonna mess around me. I know. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. You'll never know. I flounce painfully toward the club line. Be going in or not? Oh, wait, where's your dad? <laughs> he said some, something's come up and he can't make it. Yes! I'm, I'm like, yes, but I'm sad at the same time because I don't get to see that beautiful face. Let me rise a last second, too. You know so much I hate that. Yeah. I know some people like you, Ted. I know some people like you, and it drives me nuts! Ted crosses his arms, annoyed. He also sounds kind of suspicious. I don't blame him. Invite us for a night out, and then somehow, suddenly, come unable to show up? I think I'm on to you, Mr. Sir. Good, good. Not that I'm complaining. Me neither. Well, maybe he'll join us when he's done. In the meantime, a jester once more at the disco club, waiting for Ted to get the hint. He rolls his eyes but starts forward. Yeah. Fine, let's go. 
Wait, when did the music change? I never realized. <laughs> stepping into the disco club feels like stepping into another world. We've been here. The multicolored lighting here makes it seem like everything's covered in powered haze. Damn! Oh yeah! And there are lights in the shape of flowers and circles dancing around spotlights on the floor. I spot people dancing on the, f the dance floor. Away from the lit up bar and the sn Yeah, yeah. And the snazzy red couches and seats. The whole place is screaming 80s. I love it. <laughs> this is so cool in here and I'm dancing. I'm dancing. Play so hurts my ass. <laughs> well, I'm dancing. Deal with it. <laughs> Dad holds up a hand to shield his face and I nudge him with my shoulder. Don't be such a stickler. We're supposed to have fun, remember? That's the whole reason your dad invited us out. I'm a pie here now, is he? Go grab us to see you want or some drinks. You trust me with your drink? That's a voice you can do, boy, isn't it? <laughs> it's fitting it. <laughs> cool. This is how you pick up guys. <laughs> Ted makes a face. He can't think of anything worse. <laughs> I'm at least I can guess myself. Just get some drinks. <laughs> she. I love that she said that with a straight face. Like, I could spit in it for you. This music is so pretty. Ted stalks off without another word, and I'm left standing alone in the middle of the club. Wow, rude. Just for that, I should get him water. <laughs> I never realized how unlikable Ted makes himself sometimes. Like, he wasn't so serious and uptight all the time. He'd be way better. But he's always so grumpy and pushy. Not attractive at all. Maybe even just seeing things that aren't there in him. Maybe you're overthinking this too much. Maybe you should just like him for who he is. I groan at this thought as I reach the bar and take a seat. Am I really imagining everything? It's probably better not to try anything. I'm this unsure. My, you seem so sad. My God! <laughs> Holy Jesus, you're big. Like, holy sh! Sorry. <laughs> I sure kept tight in my seat and look across the counter. Who's Miranda? You were a kid? What? Who's Miranda? The fuck is Miranda? And why isn't that turt, turt, shirt, tits, ah. Why is her head so big compared to Nicole? Is her, I can't. That or maybe she, maybe she just ripped those boobs. It's unmistakably here. I recognize that space out look anywhere. Nice. You can say Miranda's a friend. We ran into each other at school one time. I haven't been able to get rid of her ever since. Ah, uh, damn it. All her brains went to her boobs, didn't they? She's the type of person you'd say is a little mad. But she means well. She's pretty sharp, too, and she's paying attention. Oh, yeah, I'm so surprised. I'm a little surprised, too. Jesus Christ. Er, well, yeah, I mean... I never really pictured you working in a place like this. You look like you're ready for a strip club. Yes, I read what's definitely the owner said. What did he say? <laughs> I hate that you made her a redhead. You're offending all the redheads out there. I'm a redhead. Miranda squeezes her eyes shut real tight as she tries to remember. That was it. He said it was... He looked and... I looked great in outfits. So he decided to hire me. It was wonderful. Like, if it was that easy to get a fucking job. I feel a breeze when I wear it. I like how the music gave me some time to just think. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna stop. Just take some time. Just take some time. Just take a moment. <clears throat> yeah, because she's barely wearing anything. Red bikini top, a purple sheer blouse over that. I'm jealous of her body, I'll admit. Nicole, you have, have you seen your body? Holy shit, you got those hips and those boobs. But... Yep! Right, um... It, anyway, do I really look that sad? Just a little. Just a smidge. Would you like something to drink? Yummy drinks might help you make you feel less sad. Maybe. Can I have the menu? Without another word, Miranda passes me a drink menu. I have a bunch of fancy sodas here. Smoothies, too. It's even an alcoholic menu, but that's obviously off limits. I can only imagine what Ted would say if I managed to convince Miranda to serve me a drink like that. <clears throat> I made a strange noise again. What noise? I didn't say anything! I did- uh, sorry, it's just- Did you see that guy I came in here with? 
Don't tell her anything. Don't tell her anything. She's obviously up in the clouds somewhere. She's up in the clouds. I don't know. The one with the funny expressions? She looks just about to fucking hurt and I hold back a giggle. That's Ted, alright. So you kinda like him a lot, but at the same time I'm not sure if I like him at all. Should be talking to Chandra about this or or or, or Darren or Darren. Oh man, I wish Darren was our awesome gay friend. <laughs> I'd be the best. You can just get on my nerves sometimes. Like, I think he's really cool. I look up to him and he's watched out for me a long time now. At the same time, he can be such a sour puss. That's a funny word. <laughs> how, are, are you in, how are you in college? <laughs> Miranda tips her chin downward and hums thoughtfully. I don't think it's possible to split his personality into a scene. Might just have to take him as is. Thank you! Miranda, thank you! Didn't think I'd say that. Oh, but on the bright side, you should be able to figure out if you like him or not that way. I guess so. Okay, she's actually being helpful. I think about it more. Super basic lesson, but it makes sense. If I think about all of Ted's bossy, grumpy ways, I still feel all gushy for him. That must mean I really like him, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's it. You're right. But <coughs> You're right, Miranda. I'll have to figure it out that way. If I really don't like him, these feelings will go away. Anyway, I fret about it. I'll slam the menu in front of Miranda. You vigor revigorated. I'm back, baby. Two visitors, please. I hand Miranda a $10 bill for my purse, and after she gives me a change and order an order number stand, I start to look for Ted. Thank God. <laughs> it doesn't take long. I should have known he'd pick a booth way in the corner away from all the noise and lights. I'm back! I place a number on the very edge of the table. Take a seat, opposite from Ted. You look like you're having fun all by yourself. I feel a headache coming on. You're such a grandpa! Ted reaches over to tap our number stand against the table. So what'd you get? How much do I owe you? I got a fissure for both of us, and don't worry about it, it's on me. Nicole, na 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 na. Ted, please, it's totally fine. What's the soda between friends? Ted grumbles and sits back in the seat. I don't like going people things. You don't! Just drink it for fuck's sake! You don't owe me anything. Now stop making a funny face and loosen up. This place is supposed to be fun. My face isn't funny! <laughs> Not usually. It's only when you get into one of your moods. I don't have moods. Ted Salk's getting into one of his inexistent moods. Laughing, I notice a server coming over with the two sodas that I ordered, and he places them on the table before taking our number away. From that point on, Ted and I continue making small talk. Nothing too personal. It's like we're at work, which, you to which totally sucks because it's just two of us here in a club like this. Kinda feels like a date. Wish it was. Do I want it to be a date? Maybe a little. Really goes with that down. My eyes widen and I look down at my cup. Oh, where'd all my soda go? Don't tell me I was facing out again. Oops, uh, I didn't notice, but hey, that's not something you say to a girl, right? Like that. You wanted to spit in his drink? That's not something you say to a guy. It's like, I'm gonna spit in your drink. <laughs> what did I say? I'm gonna point it out. Ted nurses a brow quizzically. Has he ever been on a date? He sips them really from his drink as, as if I'd be offended otherwise. Honestly, I should be used to it by now. I sigh and place a cheek, cheek on my hand. Okay hand on my cheek or something. Looking at the dance floor, everyone looks like they're having a lot of fun out there. I'm gonna have fun too. <laughs> Ted, let's dance. Ted nearly spits out a soda. Oh, God. He wipes his mouth with a napkin and shakes his head. Go by yourself. I ain't going. Come on, dance with us. Seriously? You're really bad at this whole girl thing. What kind of southern gentleman leaves a lady to dance on her own? Ted dishes at himself and leans back in his seat. This guy. <laughs> and please, it'd be lame if I go on my own. Oh god, I didn't even click that button. I mean, what good reason that it should. Alright, let's think about this. I guess honestly is the best policy right now. Because you're the only guy I want to dance with in this club. Aww! 
I didn't know she was gonna say it that way. I thought it was like, cause I wanna dance with you. You know, like a dude, like a friend, like a bro ho, what's up? But no, she said it like that. I say it as sincerely as possible so Ted doesn't think I'm messing around with him like usual. In surprise, his eyes round. His eyes round and they suddenly avert them by glancing at the dance floor. A guy might what? A guy might what? If you think like that, a guy might what? Bah! Well, I don't really need any. But that's cool too. He shakes his head, blushing. A few signs I can pass before Ted speaks up again. I'm gonna go dance with you. Only because he asked so nicely. Yay! Alan's the best policy. He slides out of his seat and gets on, gets to my side. Before I hand, <clears throat> before I had the chance to stand, I stare at him. Huh. Okay. Uh, my side. And stand. I stare at him as he extends his hand. I'm just going to do the dance for okay? Your proper southern gent. Thank you. Would. Now you can't complain about me not treating you proper. Ted looks away, hiding his shyness with a shaky veneer. Veneer? Veneer, probably. As I decide whether to take it or not. <sighs> like I'm not going to. I slide my hand into his and smile. God, I almost said pants. <laughs> <laughs> We're not there yet! Meeting his eyes as he glances at me. Firmly, he wraps his fingers around mine and leads me away. We find an open space in the dance floor and I start to work my body into the rhythm of the dance music. There's no more dance music, I'm sad. They have been playing in here. Ted, on the other hand, kind of just stands there awkwardly, shuffling, <laughs> shuffling one foot from the next. I try to yell at him over, to s for the, over the sound of the music. Dancing's not that hard! Really? No, that's... Uh, Ted mumbles something that I can barely hear. He's so stiff! What'd you say? Do la! <laughs> um, do la! I can't sounds this time, but... Still no dice. Ted, I really can't hear you have to speak up up there. Up there. Laugh at me! <laughs> Ted roars is so loudly that I feel like a for da, 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 da. So loudly that I feel like the forest knocked me back a few steps. Completely flustered and probably embarrassed. Ted closes his eyes and begins snapping his fingers, just like he had. He uses his body into the room and wow, that was good. Yeah. Oh, Ted is actually great. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just imagining Ted just dancing with his jazzy moves. He's like, yeah. Pretty much me dancing is just moving my shoulders up and down and tapping my feet. <laughs> his body's moving to the music so fluidly. No awkward bumbles or missteps. You must know. You can dance. Never said I couldn't. Hey. What was that all? The one was with all that hesitancy. I work in my groove alongside Ted. Grinning as he seems to finally get into it. He's pulling all these moves that you see those pros do on TV. Really impressed. Where'd you learn to do all this? Dance with someone else younger. Were you a ballerina, Ted? Ted suddenly reached for me as he pulls me close, locking me in frame in a frame with one hand out and the other near my hip. His fingers curl around mine comfortably. <clears throat> Mostly ballroom though. And they summon I usually brag about well you should. I suddenly gasp as he dips me without any warning. I look up- this is not music for dipping. Uh, I look up to see him grinning smugly at me, knowing full that he surpassed my expectations. You could have warned me you were doing that! I was dying! Looks like that'd be no fun at all. <laughs> Ted pulls me back, bringing me back into the frame. I feel my face go a little hot as he stares right in my face, so close to his. Yes! Do it! Ted, keep up. You're gonna look stupid otherwise. But you're nice. Ted takes the lead and guides my body into following his steps. He goes slow at first, like he's trying to teach me. And even though we're in the middle of a bunch of people, it feels like it's just us. Oh, that's super cheesy, but there's no denying my feelings now. Once Ted sees that I've got the basics down, he's twisting and turning through the music, laughing as he sees me catching on. I like Ted. Playing my heart pounds when he holds... When we hold hands, or the feeling I get when he... When I see him, generally smile only proves it. The night continues on like that, of course. Ted and I take breaks to drink and rest before hitting the dance floor again. It's so much fun that I barely notice how tired I am until we we're both leaving the club. <laughs> and their and their expressions are just <sighs> feet are gonna be so sore tomorrow. I groan and kick up an ankle to try to rub my foot through my shoe. Just 
I had to wear heels tonight. Pushed it too hard, did I? Well. Are you kidding? Not at all. I had an amazing time. You should have told me you could dance. No, 21's just embarrassing. Well, shut up. I don't like people gawking at me like I'm some monkey on a leash. Well, well, you shouldn't worry. You'd only impress them. I, I think I'd even learned a thing or two from dancing with you. <clears throat> Ted pushes his hair back out of his face and smiles. Oh, damn. I'm a pretty small teacher, so I wouldn't be surprised. A beat passes. Oh. Did you... What? What was a joke? Was that a joke? I'm sorry, I was like really confused. Was that supposed to be a joke? Because it wasn't funny. <laughs> I point at Ted. You just made a joke. You rarely do that. Rarely. Don't make a big deal over something like that. I can make jokes too. <laughs> Ted crosses his arms and the smile fading... Fading off his face like a baldly hung painting. Ba baldly? Badly. Baldly. You know, it's getting late. Bullshit at home. Lame, but you're so right. I can't mess up my secret schedule too much or monies are going to be such hell. But I guess that means I'm off then. Yeah, look at your morale. It's 14. Wait, Nicole! Kiss, 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 kiss! I stop mid-step and turn to look back at Ted expectantly. Expectantly. Ugh. It looks like he has something to say, but as usual, he takes a while to say it. Hurry up! It's gonna be midnight by that time you say something. Mind if I walk you home? Yeah, I don't mind at all. To make sure you're safe, I mean, don't want anything bad to happen to you. Uh, uh huh, I'm sure that's all. Ted. Jeez, you're such a sweetheart. But that's going to put you out of your way, huh? Thanks, but no. No! No! Uh, no! Why? The why? I'm a big girl. I can walk home on my own. Remember the last time you walked home on your own? You got a creepy stalker on your ass. No! <laughs> Take you home. Please. <laughs> I notice the slightest glimpse of disappointment that runs over Ted's face. And I can't leave him like this now. I feel awful. Thanks. <laughs> I don't say anything as I lean over. And Coily gets him on the cheek. The the ah! The look on his face. It looks like he just got hit by a bolt of lightning. That's what I thought in the dance lessons. I wave at Ted as I hurry down the sidewalk. Good night, Ted. I'll see Puberty. <laughs> Good night, Ted. I'll see you later. Distantly, Ted waves back at me with a single hand. I see the other reach up slowly to graze over his cheek. If I'm not imagining it. Ted grins and his fingers run across his skin. Oh. Okay, that, that was close enough for me. That was close enough for me. I can deal with that for now. I'm going to take that as a good sign. Ah! Hi, Darren. How you doing? It's nice seeing you. No, I'm not having trouble at all. This is going great. Oh, Jesus. Um, you know what? Work, and then we'll... Yep. Absolutely no morale. None. None at all. That's great. Why don't you just go to bed? <laughs> sleep. Sleep. We're gonna sleep again. Do it again. Just, just snap. We're getting- There we go! And that is how we do the duel. It said something about over 900. Hold on. To win the heart of a character besides having good relationship value with him slash her, you also need to have a high value over 900 in a specific stat. Which one? You have to find out for yourself. Okay. So I just gotta get over 900 with diligence. Oh, that shouldn't be difficult at all. Yay! Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Just keep doing it. <laughs> that book did our, did get our diligence up like a fuck ton, so I should be okay. And I'm gonna end it here since it's another cutscene. I'll see you guys next time.